Hello and welcome. You're watching NDTV and we are now on YouTube. Our address is very simple. It's just youtube.com slash NDTV and you can log in for all the details, live updates and you also answer so many questions that you the viewer throw at us. Now this is the top story segment. In this every morning when I do my show Good Morning India, I give you five stories to pick on and the ones that attract most attention from you is what you and I discuss on our YouTube channel. I don't frankly have to look to see what all of you have mostly voted about. It is the protests that are still happening in several parts of city over the Citizenship Amendment Act. 76% of you have actually voted for that. Okay, so let's talk about what today is going to be like. But to contextualize it, let's just quickly take a glimpse of what happened yesterday. We'll connect it that to Friday. On Thursday, India united against the Citizenship Amendment Act. There were protests, some planned, some unplanned, some by political parties, others by civil societies, others by student unions, and then just by ordinary citizens who decided to come out on the streets and get their voices heard, ensure that they stood up for India, which is in link, in sync with our constitution, not divided on religious lines. And that was the overriding sentiment that we got from a lot of these protesters who came out on the streets. At least 15 to 20 cities is what we mapped out is where all these protests took place. There were huge crowds in Mumbai. Uh, There were huge crowds in Kolkata, Delhi as well. They were largely peaceful in nature. But there was violence reported as well. There was violence in basically two places. There was one in in Mengaluru where two people lost their lives after police had to open fire at them. There were several other police officers who were injured as well. In Lucknow, there was in the old town Lucknow, in Thakurganj area, basically in the walled city over there, their violent protests took place and one person lost their life. Apart from that, like I said, largely the protests were very peaceful and the overarching message here had been that people said that this was a time when they had to take a stand against what they felt was an extremely unconstitutional uh, act, something that did not sink in with the idea of India. Now, after seeing a day like that on Thursday, we are looking and we are talking on a Friday. Now, Friday is a little different from Thursday. Why? In a sense that there are protests even today, but they're more planned in nature and also police is going to be much more prepared, remember. So today, the big picture, if you look at, if you imagine the map of India at the moment, there are protests in Delhi, four of them actually. There are protests in Kolkata, in Midnapur, in West Bengal. There are protests planned out in universities in Chennai, in Karnataka at the town hall area as well. So several protests are now coming up. This is in fact it's not just India there are protests happening internationally as well in university the students are speaking up now another factor that has been the point of concern with these protests has been the restrictions that come along with these protests I'm talking about section 144 these are basically prohibitory orders that means not more than five people can be at any one given point that and also The thing that India is facing now, which is internet shutdown in mostly areas that get sensitive. So both these, how did that impact normal life? And the third, in fact, that was exclusive to the NCR region, if I can say that, because the borders, uh, especially one that connects Delhi to Gurgaon, was sealed for over eight hours. That meant that people who left their offices and as they left their homes, in fact, at eight o'clock in the morning could not even reach offices till two in the afternoon. There could have been elderly citizens over there. There could have been school kids who we now know their schools actually arranged for them to be dropped home with metros with teachers escorting them. So it was a chaotic, chaotic Thursday, especially if you were in Guru Gram and we saw miles and miles, kilometer long jams all over NH8, especially even on the other side in MG Road. Now that the preparation on Friday is that most of the corporates have decided to let their their employees work from home and ask them to only come to office in case there is an emergency. They are open, there is no alert, there is no panic. But they are saying keeping the sensitivity of the uh, of the matter in mind, they have asked them to stay back at home and work from home. Some schools we know now have extended, in fact, pre pawned their winter vacation and said, why don't you just stay at home and let's see what happens over the weekend as well. Anyways, it is a Friday, there is going to be a weekend soon after and then Christmas is not very far away. 
so that is that was the third point i was talking about let me go back to the first two on mobile phone connectivity and on section 144 mobile phone connectivity a crucial crucial matter remember all this time on ntv.com as well we've been flashing of how many areas actually all over the country mobile phone connectivity is down and internet on your mobile phone is also down now why does that really happen that happens in areas where we expect some violence to happen or we expect some a lot of people to get in and police just clamps down on communication to ensure that there's no hate that is being spread also to ensure that a lot of people can't get together and come out and protest if that's what they are meaning to do so yesterday once these protest broke out there was clamp down on in at least 5 areas in the national capital alone where mobile phone connectivity connectivity was cut down now imagine that in the national capital if you were in mandi house if you were at ito if you're in the northeastern region if you were in shahadra and if you were in any of the central delhi districts as well in okhla in shaheen bagh etc there was no mobile phone connectivity that was pretty baffling for a lot of us i was anchoring yesterday and we were trying to get in touch with a reporter who was at ito and at jamia at the jama masjid and in the jamia area as well where protests were planned out but we couldn't get in touch with them because no calls no sms's no mobile phone connectivity was seen in those areas now today we are told in delhi at least none of that is going to happen there is mobile phone connectivity throughout internet is on throughout as well but coming back to the first point the three things that i started by telling you the first point on section 144 that remains at least in delhi in delhi there are at least about 14 to 15 districts just in the north eastern part of delhi and there are other districts as well in sensitive areas which have been marked out where protests are bound to happen when i say bound to happen i mean the uh, there have been calls of protest there the police has obviously rejected all any permission to carry out protests but protesters are going to come out nonetheless and thus they have enforced section 144 in place so that they will be detained once they get out on the streets so that's the picture on those three counts when it comes to delhi but the picture in say up is much more grim remember up again which saw violence yesterday in in two districts it was not just lucknow there was uh, in the sambhal area as well uh, people had set buses on fire and let me just quickly give you an update on when it comes to mobile phone connectivity at the moment we are told that mobile phone is shut uh, mobile phone internet connectivity you can still make calls still send messages but your internet on your phone will not work in the following areas in lucknow city all of it in pilibhit in sambal remember the place where buses are set on fire in ghaziabad in bareilly in meerut we are also now being told in area specific areas in noida in indrapuram and adjoining ncr regions mobile phone connectivity is not there remember this at a time when uh, the up police has already decided to put in the prohibitory order still sunday and that is going to pan the state so that's the preparation that up police is doing at this point in fact to talk about this my colleague alok pande spoke with the dgp the top cop in uttar pradesh and this is what he said he is now saying talking about the sambhal violence first said that the one samajwadi party mp has now been booked for inciting violence in the sambhal region that's the up dgp saying apart from that he's saying some hundreds of people have been detained several fir's being registered at this point in different instances of violence that took place and vandalism that took place in uttar pradesh he also goes on to maintain the up top cop that anti social elements involved in violence in lucknow and sambhal so he's not saying this was general public and or a particular organization or a particular group he's just generically saying there were anti social elements who did not want peace for today he says the focus for the up police is going to be on friday prayers since this uh, the friday prayers happen in open spaces where more and more people get inside and they pray together so that's why the focus is on that to ensure that there is security there and the police when asked about how prepared really were they taking on these protesters the up dgp says that they they were not under prepared but were at a geographical disadvantage because in lucknow say for instance the capital there the old De- uh, the old lucknow region where i talked about thakurganj etc which is the walled city there lanes are too narrow 
so they are saying that the up police did, were at a geographical disadvantage they could not go in and there were protesters coming out in those narrow lanes and they could not help any situation over there so that was the situation in up so i've told you about delhi i've told you about up let's talk about karnataka now where which is one place where a protest did go violent yesterday in mengaluru city well there section 144 has been enforced as well and there have been arrests that have happened there have been detentions that have taken place but the effect has been such that if you look at the map right in the northern so if karnataka ends here this is where kerala starts and in that kerala the northern belt of kerala is where high alert has been put in place and kerala police now taking making efforts to ensure that no untoward activity happens and the spillover effect from karnataka to kerala does not take place quick note on kerala it is currently being uh, ruled by uh, the government in power there is a left government the kerala chief minister has on record come out to say that nrc and caa will not see the light of the day in his state at least so you can expect uh, that the temperament of the government already who has given in to this who is anti caa and nrc at this point so the protests might happen but the likelihood of them getting violent is a little less in fact kerala is one of those places where all the left parties for the first time parties the udf and the ldf etc which could never see i to i are actually together on this issue so that's the situation in kerala in madhya pradesh for instance uh, we're also getting reports at this point that at least 44 districts uh there has been section 144 in place but the pradesh again remember is a congress ruled state but interestingly despite the stand that congress took in parliament against the caa and the nrc the madhya pradesh chief minister kamal nath hasn't spoken about this just yet in fact when i asked a specific question to our colleagues in that state they said that uh, they are waiting they say that the high command will decide on how this is to go forward and that's what they are waiting for so i think i've managed to give you a pan india figure on how things are looking like yesterday also one of the top highlights of the day had been uh that the protests in mumbai turned out to be hugely successful we saw massive pictures of streets and streets full of people who came out and protested and peacefully they came out they raised slogans we saw a huge turnout from bollywood the a listers missing somehow the khans were missing we saw the the three i'm forgetting the phrase at this point but uh, all the blockbuster movie stars we did not see them but we did see a lot of participation from other uh, bollywood actors who came out and spoke about it anurag kashyap in fact has spoken to ndtv and he had very strong words you can check out that interview on ndtv.com as well and he goes out to say that what modi and shah is doing is nothing less than what indira gandhi and sanjay gandhi had done he's actually compared modi shah to indira and sanjay gandhi so strong words there for bollywood to be speaking out and uh, so that's that that's what mumbai is also up to i also wanted to bring to your attention a very interesting story that ndtv has been doing and i'm going to try and see if i can find that on the front page of ndtv.com so as you can see a lot of stories there coming in from all over the country and also has a mention of we are humans first that was ramchandra guha who was also taken under detention uh in mengal in bangalore actually when the protests were happening over there so uh in in all of this we also saw the story of a bengaluru cop uh bengaluru dcp if you go to ndtv.com and just do that check this is the story that you're going to get and this really is a sweet sweet one this is dcp of bengaluru dcp bengaluru central chetan singh rathor and on thursday i want to bring out for you how exactly he tried to calm the people in the area let me play out this for you just listen in to what happened and how he tried to calm the people so more the mentality aa jati hai wo more mentality mein rupa hua koi bhi badmash hum aapko tak ek nahi kar sakte wo hum mein se ek koi chupa hoga aur usse iska fayda utha liya to pitenge hum sab agar us pe bharosa hai agar us pe bharosa hai to main ek gaana gaunga और उन जाने में मेरे सारे देशवासी मेरे 
All right, so you saw that. He goes on to say that if he's saying, I cannot visually make out if there are any miscreants or some anti social or some violent people with a violent bent of mind in this crowd. I can't discriminate by just looking at you. But I can tell you this that in case there is violence, both you and I are going to face the brunt of it. You will be hurt and so will I. That's the DCP reaching out to the people who were protesting in that area. And then he goes on to say that if you trust me, then sing this song with me. And then he followed that up with the national anthem. How beautiful is that really? So that's what happened in Bengaluru, one of the most watched videos really. And something at a time when we are questioning the excesses by Delhi police in Okla, by UP police in the in AMU, at a time when so many questions are being asked of police, this cop, DCP Rathor from Bengaluru, really showing the way to a lot of us. So that's how Friday is looking like for the moment. As the day progresses, we'll have more details into what exactly happened with the protests as they went around in Delhi alone. If you um, care to know at this point, there are about four protests that are happening. But a quick note, I think I've missed out on the metro connectivity, which is also very crucial. A lot of you depend on that. It's a lifeline for people here in the national capital. Well, metro services, the best thing to do really is to go to Twitter and follow the DMRC handle. They're very quick to update that. They update it every minute. You can get the details on NDTV.com as well for the metro connectivity. And while yesterday over 15 metro stations were shut down, today, except two stations, which are one in Shaheen Bagh, one in Okla, all are functioning. No, uh, all metro stations, all lines are functioning as of now. But as the day progresses, we can expect that to change to keep uh, yourself updated and to ensure that you're not caught up in that. You can always follow that handle for more. For the moment, that's all I have for you. Thank you for watching.